It says Asheron. All right, cool. Big Tank, yo, I mean, it's it's so much to talk to you about with just this with this uh new season and all these these hits that's been like the signature of the power franchise. But I I gotta rewind. I, I mean, I, I, first I gotta rewind to my wife and kids because I because I, I feel like that's your, your first big, you know, gig in the industry. And, and like, I wonder, like, how did it feel to like go from just the music to now? I mean, I know you was a performer and, and some other stuff, but how did it feel like to get that gig? And now you like so, so got a solid new kind of career path doing uh doing television. You know, um, my wife and kids was great, man. Like. It was uh, Damon Wayans, you know, uh, was making beats at his house and he had bought a bunch of equipment and didn't really have it hooked up properly. So I went over to his house with a friend of mine and hooked him up. And he was just like, I was teaching him how to make beats. And he was just like, you know, uh, man, you should do the music on my show. And I was like, word, okay. So he offered me to you know, to be the composer on the boondocks. And I mean, I'm sorry, on uh, my wife and kids. And I literally like left his house and drove and, and, went and took some classes at UCLA and enrolled in a composition course at UCLA because I had never been a composer before. Um, and that was like my first show. And from there, it was a show called Static Shock and then the Boondocks and, um, you know, yeah, being... Let's not go past the Boondocks because you, you got the theme song for the Boondocks, <laughs> which is like, I mean, that's a classic, you know, just part of like, uh, you know, American culture and that 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 time period, like everybody... That grew up at that time knows that that theme song. Um, Thank you. When you get like a big hit like that on television, you it is playing like all the time, and it still plays on YouTube or wherever. Like, how does that feel? I mean, I, I know it's one thing to have a, a hit on a radio to have that, but when it's like just kind of like in infamy with a television show, like how does that feel? We got good time songs. We got all these other songs that you know we remember and have one of those. Like you know, like how proud were you as just as an artist, I'm gonna tell you, man. It's it's um, it's a blessing. Seriously, like I don't even, you know, when you're doing stuff, you just be doing it. You know what I'm saying? And you're just working on it, and you want it to be the best. Like you, I definitely, you know, wanted to be ill, and I wanted to be like make real hip hop, and you know, like no real hip hop had ever really been on TV before uh, to represent the culture. So I wanted to make sure I was representing the culture with the music, um, in every way, shape, and form. From the you know the kick and snare and hi hat and the melody and you know and then Ash who killed it with, and then the scratches and just everything came together so dope. Um, you don't know that you know at the time people are gonna lose it. You know what I mean? Even with the outro, the do 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 do, like you don't realize that people are gonna grab this stuff. You're just making it, and you know when they do grab it, you're just like, oh my god, thank you. Like you, they 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 get it. They saw it. Thank you. You know, so, um, and it's the same with these TV shows, bro. Like, you know, when I'm doing them, I'm trying to kill them, all of them. I'm trying to put my foot in them, but um, you don't know. And then when the fans go crazy or it goes viral or a song, like, you know, You Can't Stop the Rain, uh, when Lamar was killing people went viral, you know, you hope that that happens, but you don't know that that's going to happen. And then it happens and you're just like, yeah, yeah, they got it. They understood it. Good. So before you got to the Power University, you had, you had the Green Leaf and all this stuff, and then you get to you get the Power University. You got you got Fifty, who's who's you know known for the music game and known for all these hits, and then you get to like make like all these like real to the culture. I, I feel like you like it just it freed you from whatever like you know you got to do this for Green Leaf or own and you know. But when you get to the stars and power, I just feel like you got the freedom to make like the music that. That that you wanted want to to be hip hop or whatever, um, all of these different series like how has it been to like see what the characters are, what the stories in are, and like really kind of kind of compose for those different flavors of of you know the Tariq power and the and the Ghost power and the, and the Tommy power like how and the BMF like you know just as an artist like to to be able to look at the work and make that music like how does that how did, how do you go through that process? Oh, you froze. You there? You there? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, just can't, it freezes every now and then. Sorry about that. Yeah. But um, 
you know, I think just being diverse helps tremendously. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like ghosts is different than pot than, than, than forest completely musically. Um, I'm telling a different story. So I'm using different textures, you know, ghost is young, you know, they're in college. So we're listening to a lot of young hip hop. You know what I mean? Um, Tommy show Jannard's young, but diamond ain't young and neither is Tommy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're listening to different stuff than Jannard is, you know, and then on BMF, meeting them, you know, I got them listening to some wild shit. You know what I mean? And from JIT music on down, um, when it comes to Detroit. Uh-oh. Somewhere over there, you froze, you froze, you froze. You all back. Come and on. then, you know, when they moved to Atlanta, when they first moved to Atlanta, Atlanta didn't have no sound. There you go. What was the last thing you heard? Uh, the, what, what was the last thing you You said something about the, the Detroit and then... So like when it comes to yeah, Detroit, yeah, yeah. with Big Meech and them, I got them listening to JIT music and techno because you know that's where all that stuff came from, the Cybertrons and and uh, Clear and you know uh, all that stuff, Juan Atkins. And then you know when they when they go to to Florida, I mean when they go to to, to Atlanta, Atlanta didn't really have a sound yet, so they're listening to like Miami bass, which is like Two Live Crew and shit like that. So you know I'm really trying to you know just educate the masses to what would have been playing in 91, 92 in this city and in that city. And in Canaan, we did the same thing. Like Mary was blowing up in 92, 93, 94, you know, um, you know, all the, you know, the people who were making records at that time, I'm trying to get songs that really sound and feel like that era for that show. So people feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like when I get the screener, I mean, the editors are still cutting episodes and everything else. So like, where, where are you, like are you doing this from the script do you get like a first cut like how like when you start getting into the music like how much do you have to be able to create from to know what you know Tons. you know like i get the scripts so i kind of know which way i want to go that way and then after the director's cut i'm going to sit down and watch it again and then start to you know move around a little bit and you know there's a budget you know what I'm you know what i'm saying the directors want to probably just put in 50 big records you know what i'm saying so i gotta listen i listen to what they're listening to though and i'll give them something that feels like that you know it needs to feel like that like i want to make them feel like i didn't you know i couldn't spend two million dollars on this one episode but you know the music we got in here bangs and and, and knocks so i'm you know always doing that but from the right after the director's cut i get it and we're moving and i know like right now Hollywood, like everybody's focused on the writers and the actors, but I, I think like one of the most important things is for more people that look like us to get a lot of these below the line uh, positions from, you know, music supervisor to to grips to everything else. Can you like give somebody like a clue? I know your, your way was with Damon Wayans in the, in, you know, in, in his studio, his home studio, but like people that are like musically inclined or like, well, I know you took a class UCLA, but like what what would be the process for somebody to be able to explore, being able to get into the industry and 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 do you mentor and bring other people, other young people uh in with you? So I have a whole team, you know what I'm saying, that that um that I work with, you know. Um everybody gets in, I think, differently. You know, I mean, for me personally, I've been able to just kind of pivot. You know, I started off as a DJ and then a producer. And then from production, I have platinum records. So people knew at that point, he knows what he's doing. He's got a good ear for this. And that's when I met Damon. If I would have just met Damon and not had any credits, then he, I would have been at his house. You know what I'm saying? So um, getting, you know, having those platinum records on Missy and Christina Aguilera and people like that uh, gave me that opportunity. And then just having education helped. Um, once I became a composer and then a music supervisor, once, you know, I, uh, once, like when I was working on Christina Aguilera, I became an a r because, you know, they knew I had a degree and they were, you know, they were checking for like creatives that, you know, went to college. So they, I got a job at, at Universal, at Interscope and then at Geffen. And, you know, once that happened, now, you know, I'm in the building and people can see that I'm an intelligent man. I'm creative. I know what I'm doing. So, it just offered, you know, opportunities for me. Yeah. And, and before and we kept going. 
uh, you know, 50 years of hip hop, you know, happy birthday to hip hop. Can you give me like one of those stories from in, you in the studio with an artist? Like just something that people don't know, like you could just take us back to one artist that you were working with and just, can you just give us like some some little tidbit that, that the world doesn't know about that happened in the studio with you and Missy or something like, how is she or who, whoever? Like, can you rewind back? Missy's a monster. You know what I mean? Like, I remember watching Missy right one minute, man. And, you know, when that beat was done, the last thing I thought she was going to do was what she did with it. Um, so that that blew me away. Um, then I remember recording Christina Aguilera, and she cut a whole record without making one mistake. Wow. Like, not one flat note, not one sharp note, not one nothing. Just bang, 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 bang. And this was back when we were stacking hooks, you know, like three-part harmony and flawless for like an hour and a half. Like we finished a whole record in like an hour and a half. Like it usually takes a day to do a record. Just, I mean, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Like that was like scary to me, you know? And then being in the studio with Fab, you know what I mean? Watching Jay-Z do his thing, you know what I'm saying? Like these guys are just so talented, you know what I mean? They're just so, so, so gifted. I always feel like I'm cheating, you know what I mean? Being in the studio with them, seeing fifth in the game, you know what I mean? Like just watching these guys just work, man. Slim Thug, people don't realize Slim Thug was dope in the studio, you know what I mean? So just really watching these guys and, and you know, them getting today's vibe. And everybody's got a different thing. Like Dr. Dre will put the mic down and have you stand a certain way like you almost was fighting, like we would rap. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's just so many tidbits that people would do that would blow me away. You know what I mean? I just feel like I've been fortunate to be a part of it. So, but I've been fortunate to be a part of hip hop, you know, and I love hip hop to death. And if, if it was here, I would hug it. You know what I mean? Cause it changed my life. It, it, it gave me opportunities that I never knew I would have, you know? So I just, it, you know, again, thank you hip hop. Yeah. And I, and, and I gotta say this, uh, cause I know you talk about hip hop, like the exterior, but just what you said, you are hip hop. You are this, this, this anniversary, we're celebrating you also, because you're a part of all this. You've been a part of it from the TV side to mute. And um, and I just I just appreciate like what you've done, what you've been a part of, what you keep continue to create. I mean, these these songs are ba like I dropped the the uh the video. Um I think I was the first person on YouTube to drop the video for season one when they when they had the video for the uh, the theme and people was like, yo, this is this, this, you know what I'm saying? Like people was on it, like, like this is like, so I mean, like the magic that y'all making within this series and uh the way that this has become like our kind of Marvel MCU universe with all these things and the 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 part you play in it, the music is a big part of it. And I just I just want to salute you, brother. Keep doing your thing. Um, it. I'm saluting hip hop, I'm saluting you, you. I know everybody always see the Jay Zs and everybody, but just like you said, I mean, you there, and and whether you did, you feel like you cheating or not, you had to be there for a reason. You was you was there to make something happen with Fab and Jay and uh, we, we need the beat. Somebody got to make the beat. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate you, brother. Keep doing your thing, man. We got we got shot you out, man. Thank nah, you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Joe. I don't know if he's still. I'm not sure who it is now. It's me. Thank you so much, Jamal.